Hey guys, so I got the Charlottesville back from Veteran Arms. Uh, I've had it back now for probably two weeks. And um, <clears throat> I've been waiting to do a video on it. Just because I wasn't sure exactly how to do this video. Uh, it's it's not necessarily a bad video. It's a good and a bad video, I guess. Um, so I guess we'll start off with the good. The good, the good thing is, is... I did get, he did fix the gap there. There's almost no gap now. Um, and he he uh, paid shipping to and from. He didn't charge me anything for it uh, to fix it. So it was all under warranty. It took about two months, which is fine. That's, that's no problem. I know he's a small shop. So uh, I have not shot it yet. Um, but like I said, as you can see, I mean, there's no gap there now. So... It's definitely been fixed, and uh, it should shoot well. I shot well before. The issue was just uh, I was getting powder down in behind the pan. Or, I'm sorry, behind the lock plate. <clears throat> and uh, the other issue was the uh, ramrod was super tight. Uh, that's fixed as well. So, um, here's where the issue lies. It's not really an issue. Like I said, I, I'm glad he fixed it. Uh, you know, he didn't charge me anything uh, for it. And he could have because I did mess with it. Uh, so he didn't... I, I messed with it before I contacted him trying to fix the gap. And uh, he, he didn't have to look at it. He really could have told me to pound sand because I had already dicked with it. Uh, but to his credit, he did fix it. And uh, he did pay for shipping to and from. Um, my issue is... <sighs> <laughs> my issue is with just some of his comments um and uh just his, his his overall attitude so when i first noticed i had an issue i had sent him an email uh basically saying that hey look i'm getting powder behind the lock plate you know i did put some jb weld in there to try to fix it it didn't fix it um and I was totally honest with him, totally up front, and just said, hey, look, I don't know if this is something you can fix or not. Um, and he totally ignored that email. He never emailed me back, nothing. So, like, a couple days later, a week later, I sent him a message on uh, Messenger, because uh, that's, like, the easiest way to get a hold of him. And uh, let's see here. I was like, hey, did you get my email? And he's like, yeah, I got your email. Uh, so it says, I have the message that you sent regarding the pan, JB Weld, and the gouge, and the pan, etc. Uh, and he said, I have not answered the question, uh, three pan, etc. Because I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you know, basically the gun's been dicked with. He said, bo boogered, but... Uh, and I said, you know, and he goes on and says some other stuff. And it's look, look, I know that I messed with it. Uh, but I, I didn't cause the uh, the gap in the... I didn't cause the gap here. That was like that when I got it. Unfortunately, I didn't know to look for the gap. Uh, anyways, so I was like, hey, listen. You fix guns. Uh, you know, forget that, you no, know, it's warranted. I said, can I just send it to you? And you take a look at it and let me know if it's something you can fix. If you can fix it, you know, let me know what it's going to cost. You know, I can chip in. I can pay for it completely. You know, we can split the cost, whatever. Unfortunately, I had refinished this stock before I realized there was an issue. So he was trying to say that uh, by me refinishing the stock, I caused uh, the issue with uh, the gap. And uh, I had an interesting comment on my other video and a guy was saying, you know, even if I removed material, how would that cause a gap uh, in between the pan and the the barrel? If anything, it would make it sit tighter against the barrel. Uh, and I, I was like, well, that actually makes sense. But regardless, I, I didn't touch anything in here. Uh, and when I refinished the stock, I, I don't do hardly any sanding usually. If I do, it's just with 220 grit just to make it smooth. Um but now when I would when originally I sent him the email and he didn't get back to me, I figured I was on my own trying to fix it. 
So at that point, I did go in and I did take a Dremel and I tried to to take material out to get it to fit flush against the barrel. Um, and I told the owner of Veteran Arms that I did all that. I showed him pictures. Um, like I said, I didn't think he was going to look at it. So I was trying to fix it myself. So, and you can go back and look at my other video if you want to know exactly what I did. Anyways, um, so he agreed to take a look at it. Uh, and like I said, to his credit, he sent me a um, prepaid label. So I didn't have to pay for shipping. And he also paid to ship it back. And he didn't charge me for any of the repairs. He received it uh, like on the 24th or something, 25th. Uh, and I sent him a message a couple days later and just said, Hey, did, you know, did you get it? Just make sure you got it. He said, yeah, I said, uh, you know, it'll be a little bit. I said, no problem. So then I waited a whole month and I sent him a message and I said, Hey, did you get, uh, you know, did you get a chance to look at the Charlottesville yet? And he said, yeah, we've gone through it. Nothing else. I said, okay. So I waited a little bit, a couple hours and I was like, where do we go from here? You know? What, what's next and he sent me this long paragraph I guess I'll read it to you uh, it says I'm going to be completely honest and upfront here with you if you were a regular customer I would just make the necessary adjustments and send it back done deal that's it but you are not the typical customer essentially every tiny detail of this whole process and interaction will end up documented on Facebook, YouTube, and who knows where else. You are a very vocal, typical customer. And no matter what the response I give you, no matter what response I give to your posts, I will come off looking defensive, bad. If I say there is no problem, for example, the gap between the lock and the barrel flat that was made, a very big deal of online is a non-issue. So he's saying I wasn't getting uh, powder behind the lock plate. Even though in my other video I demonstrated that it was clearly disappearing. That gap, when, proper, when the lock is properly tightened down, we have measured with a feeler gauge. It is far too small for any 2F or 3F powder to get through. It's physically impossible. The grains of the powder are too large to fit. There is no way powder could have ever worked behind the lock as stated online. I can only imagine that what you saw was fouling or residue from firing, which can cause, which can find its way behind the lock plate when the piece is fired. But this is completely normal. As regards to the gap, the pan and the barrel flat, there is like, likewise no issue. There has to be some space between the frizzen and the barrel in order for the frizzen to function. If there is no gap, that means the frizzen is in contact with the barrel and will not be able to flip open. It will drag along the barrel. If I send it back and say that, for the most part, there is no problem. I come off looking like I don't know what I'm talking about. On the other hand, I could make my own video and explanations showing that these are not issues and post them. But then I look like a confrontational jerk. Either way, I lose. Bottom line is that we have gone through it, made a few adjustments, quotations minor, and otherwise the piece is fine, functional as it should be. We will be sending it back shortly. Keep in mind that was on February 23rd. So I was like, okay. I said, okay, thanks. Uh, and I was like, I assume you see my YouTube videos. Uh, and I said, you know, I didn't blame you for it, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, no, I'm not mad at you. And then he said, I do feel... That is some, some of the things you said in the videos and posts were unfair, but you were entitled to your opinions. Now, at this point, he called me. Um, and basically, now, in my opinion, he changed his tune when he called me. But uh, he says that he didn't mean to come off ignorant. He says he comes off ignorant a lot of times on social media, but he didn't mean it that way. Um I don't know. You can judge for yourself. Uh, like I said, uh, basically saying, you know, I also do Civil War reenacting. I know what powder behind the, the lock plate, or I'm sorry, not powder, but I know what uh, fouling behind the lock plate looks like. Uh, not, you know, uh, f 
flintlocks, but I use percussion guns. Um, so I, I have an idea of what I'm doing when it comes to black powder. And, and again, like I said, you can go back to other videos. I definitely demonstrated that the powder was definitely disappearing. Uh, so again, okay. So that all that whole thing happened on February 23rd. And it says we will be sending it back shortly. You know, they already made the adjustments. Everything's done. It's okay. Uh, like I said, he called me. And I haven't, I didn't hear nothing for a whole month. So March 23rd, I sent him another message. And I was just like, hey, I was wondering if you had a chance to get the Charlottesville in the mail. Uh, nothing. Uh, I waited till March 26th. I sent him another message. Uh, and I said, hey, just trying to find out what's going on. I haven't seen anything. Uh, I haven't gotten anything in the mail and, uh, I'm just trying to find out what's going on. I also sent him an email through his company because at this point, like I said, I haven't heard from him in a whole month and he hasn't said anything. So on March 26th, he finally got back to me, he says your piece is packed and it should ship out tomorrow. We have spent an inordinate amount of time trying to replicate the problem and correct in the end, although we could not replicate the problem. The entire lock and motorist area was reworked. So there's no problem, but they reworked the whole lock area. But again, there's no problem. So, okay. That's all right. Thank you. Just trying to reach out and see what's going on. And, you know, and again, I feel like once I feel, I kind of think he, maybe he didn't see my YouTube videos. And maybe when I told him I had YouTube videos, maybe he went and looked. I, I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure. It just seems to me like he kind of changed his tune because, you know, and, you know, when I said, you know, thanks very much, uh, he said, no problem. I really didn't want to send it back without being 100 percent positive. There would be no further issues. It's completely sorted out now. You will receive a tracking by this afternoon when it goes out. Sounds good. I said, sounds good. Thanks. Um, and then uh, I think. On the 28th, they sent, or 27th, the 28th, they sent it out. And then he sends me a message on the 29th and says, looks like musket is due for delivery tomorrow. Please let me know what you think. And uh, when you have a chance to get a look at it, I want to make sure it's all satisfactory, all the best. And I said, will do, thanks. Uh, and then I sent him a message and just said, hey, I looked it over. Everything looks great. I really appreciate it. The ramrod feels uh, smoother. Uh, and I... You know, for whatever reason, the trigger feels a little bit better, but that might just be because I haven't felt it in a while. Um, but either way, it seems like it feels nicer. And he said, uh, you know, glad everything is satisfactory. Hopefully you are back in action with no more problems. All the best. So, <laughs> I again, you know, I, I told him, I was like, at first I was like, when he sent me this, I'm like, dude, I'm not going to make, I can't make a video on this. How can I make a video with you saying this shit like this? Like, no one's going to believe me, you know? And I was like, that's fine. I was like, just send me the gun back. I'm never going to order from you again. Uh, you know, I, as you can see, I'm struggling to find the words because I don't know what to say. In a way, he fixed the gun. He didn't charge me anything for it. Uh, you know, after I already messed with it and, uh, I possibly made things worse. Um, so in a way I'm grateful. I'm glad he fixed it. You know, it's good customer service on his end. On the other hand, uh, you know, I mean, look at what he said. I mean, I mean, Hey, he's, you know, maybe he didn't mean to come off as quite of a ignorant as he meant as he was, or as I, I thought he was, I asked a bunch of people what they thought, you know, I showed them his conversations and I'm like, what would you think if, uh, you know, you, someone said this to you and, uh, my brother-in-law kind of was like, tell him to send you the gun back so you can make another video, you know? And, uh, I didn't want to rush this video cause I, I'm so mixed about how to feel, you know? And, uh, man, I still don't know. I still don't know. I'm still glad the gun's fixed, you know, but basically saying he reworked the whole gun, but then there was no issue. I, man, I, I don't know. Uh, would I, am I going to buy from him in the future? 
Probably not. I don't know. Um, I don't think I'm going to buy any more of these reproductions. They're nice guns. Uh, if you don't have one, you know, if you want one, get one. But uh, I think I'm just going to continue to look for uh, nice uh, originals. I actually just picked up a really nice Civil War original musket uh, for 400 bucks uh, that I'm going to be doing a video on. So... I, the quality of the gun is nice. The gun works. Uh, the condition I got the gun in was horrid. I mean, there were scratches all over the stock. That was the reason I decided to refinish the, the stock in the first place. Because it needed to refinish. Not because I wanted to. Um, anyways, like I said, to his credit, he fixed it. He sent it back to me. I just think he didn't have to be quite a... Say quite what he said. Um, but, you know, whatever. He's entitled to his opinions, just like I'm entitled to mine. Uh, and I, I also ha have mixed... Also, some of the issues I have with making this video is he's a small shop, and I'm afraid that, you know, I don't want to hurt his business or anything. But the gun is fixed. I do appreciate it. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily not buy from him. Uh, just do your research and watch some other videos. I think most people are happy with them. I didn't really look on the forums or anything. If anybody had any similar customer service experiences as I did, he did fix it. I mean, like I said, to his credit. So I'm definitely not taking anything away from that. He didn't charge me. He could have charged me. He didn't. I'm happy with it, but in the same breath, it's like maybe you you could have just fixed it. Either either could have just fixed it and not been kind of a jerk like that, or. You could have just been like, no, I'm sorry you messed with it. I can't or I can't fix it. You know, either or. You didn't have to, you know, oh, I'll take a look at it, you know, but I'm going to make you sound like nothing's wrong with it and you're an idiot and blah, 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 blah. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching.